Hi, Srishti, can you hear me and see the screen? Hi, so yes, I can hear you and see the screen. Okay, sorry, there was an update which I had to run and I had to restart the PC, hence it took time. Ah, no Uh, we'll problem. wait for Meet, Amit and uh, Sanmitra to join and then we'll start. Meanwhile, I hope you watched the videos. Uh, are you up Yeah, to date yeah, till now? I have. Did, did you watch Yes, yesterday's yes. session? Any questions Yeah, do yeah, you I have? did. Uh, no. Okay, well, just uh, Sanmitra has joined. We'll wait for Amit to join and we'll start. I'll be uh, a bit quick with questions today because I want to get this uh, in one recording, in one session, at least the migration part. So whenever you want Okay. to practice, uh, at least it should be there in one recording. Hence, I'll be a bit quick. Still, if you have any questions, we can have another session for that. And post. this is the last session for this batch. Uh, we, we have almost completed everything. Uh, when I say everything, everything with respect to Azure administrator, okay? We cannot learn Azure at everything in Azure. We don't even need to know that. It's thousands of services that we don't even need to know. Okay, so uh, let's start with migration very quickly. Uh, whatever we have discussed, it is there in recording. Go through them. If you have any questions, let me know. Assessment we have already discussed in detail. Today, I have created a new project already. While selecting a, uh, a migration project, you get an option to select the uh, internet option or uh, intranet or maybe uh, a private connection so in private connection we can go ahead with uh, vpn or azure express route most of the time it, it is express route okay uh, but we are not doing that we are going with the public network because this is just a lab session uh, we can do the migration without assessment and that that is what i am going to do it here see we have assessment tab and we have migration tab in in this assessment tab there is nothing the one which i showed you the report and everything that is the another one We can discuss that later if you have any doubts. We, we might have a follow-up sessions or we can do that on one-on-one -on -one sessions. Okay. Uh, so whatever I explained, that was the mi migrations assessment, assessment part. Today we are migrating a few servers. Two servers will migrate without any assessment. But let me repeat it. I have said this in yesterday's session also, day before also, that in live migration, even if there is a single server or two or three servers, no one will do it without assessment okay assessment has to be there it is not necessary that assessment has to be there by this tool or by any other third party tool or any, any of these tool it can be a manual assessment also you can get that report on email on an excel file that okay i have two servers 4 gb ram each 250 gb hard disk each this is the operating system this is what i'm being charged for that this is what i'm expecting that is an assessment not necessary it has to be this assessment but assessment will be there for sure once we have that we'll start with the migration for migration we come to the same project here click on migration similarly like we have azure migration assessment tool we have azure migration tool which is free and recommended by microsoft uh, however for more details we have third party tools also but these are paid you will have to pay for the license you can say uh, i have worked on three or four migration projects and all of them were on uh, Azure Migrate tool, but I know there are some tools. I know Corrent is there. One of my clients used Corrent, something like this, you can say, because I've shown you the Corrent's dummy reports. Okay, so let's go ahead with this. You always click on discover. This is, you're planning to discover your server. You're planning to start the discovery of your server. Here you will select what, where are you bringing your servers from? Are you bringing your servers from vSphere? You'll select this. Are you bringing your servers from physical data center or other cloud like AWS or GCP or Zen or IBM or Alibaba, anything, you'll select this. In our case, I have hosted two virtual machines on Hyper-V. So I'm selecting Hyper-V, okay? Target region, what is the target region? Now target region uh, could be anything. I, I can have Australia, I can have anything, but it is sensible decision to have a target region where your data center is. If my data center is in India and I'm selecting my target region is Australia, I am asking my data to travel all along. It, it na dur. It's been latency hogi. There, there are uh, chances you will get errors. So it's always recommended that you select your uh, target region where your actual on-premise data center is residing. In my case, that's a, a virtual thing. Uh, I'm using VPN, so it is US. Hence, I'm selecting East US. Okay. I confirm this. I create the resource. While that is being created, landing zone setup, I have already discussed about it, right? What is landing zone? When you answer about landing zone, you, you can read from here as it is from this document, okay? After assessment, 
and uh, pre-migration. Sorry, after assessment and pre-migration, there's a thing called landing zone setup. What do we do in landing zone setup where we take care of Azure account if it is not there already? Subscription if it is not there already. Azure Active Directory. It could be both cases. Maybe they, this is the first time a company is trying to migrate their server to Azure. So they will have to take care of account also. It's not necessary. You will do it. Azure account may be their chief technology officer or anyone or chief financial office officer or MD or VP. They will buy the account for them using their corporate credit card or enterprise agreement with the help of your uh, company's architecture team. It's their hectic. But it is a part of that if they do not have subscription, maybe they will purchase and they will let you know, okay, use this subscription. Maybe you will have to purchase it as your active directory. It it could be there or you, you will have to create it. You as in for active directory, there is always a separate team. So don't ever say that I created, I set up the uh, Azure active directory from scratch. Otherwise your questions will change and everything will get changed. Okay. You, you will not be suitable for that profile. Then you say that we have an active directory team. They did it. But you should know that this is a part of landing zone setup. If you have all this in existing one, okay, relevant accesses, do you have sufficient access, resource groups, VNet, network security guard, uh, network security group, virtual private network, firewall, policies, and even the load balancer. Do you guys remember we discussed the load balancer? So in load balancer, we can have the load balancer first and we can add the machines later. So now let's say that on premises, I have 10 machines, 10 separate machines but while going on cloud i'm thinking to have a load balancer in front of those 10 machines so when it comes to migration you can say that i suggested you can take this uh, initiative or you can say this that okay architecture team has given us the details where they asked us to create all these details create virtual machines then create load balancer but with my experience or with my previous experience, I spoke to the architecture team and I suggested them that we can have the load balancers before we move the virtual machines. What is the mandatory thing guys in load balancer? While creating load balancer, there is one mandatory thing which you have to select. Rest everything can be added later, which is that? Are you recalling the load balancer topic? Front end IP. Exactly, front end IP. So you can say that we selected the front end IP, then we uh, attach the dummy machines to that uh, to that load balancer and check if everything is working fine. All all this. Why are you doing this? What are you trying to achieve with this load balancer? Apne laga liya, front end IP laga liya, dummy machines bhi bana liya as pe apne. And you checked the load balancer. Everything is working fine. Okay, this is only if needed load balancer. Load balancer is not needed in every case, but you say this proactively in your interview. It gives a very good impression. It will set you apart from other uh, other candidates. Okay, you say this that architecture team did not suggest this. But there are obviously exceptions. There is always a scope of improvement. Okay, and you guys are implementation engineers. You deal on portal day in day out you have the better idea of portal so you you do give suggestions you can say that we used to give suggestions sometimes to architecture team also so this was one of my suggestions all of you can say it right it's, it's not the case that all of you are going to same interview same day so all of you can use the same example because you can say we use the public ip and then we attached some dummy machines we created some test machines we checked everything was working fine and then after that we started migration but why did you do that is you could have moved your actual machines and then you could have created load balancer what did you achieve here by doing this yes, yes. what did you achieve here by taking this approach that have load balancer first and then move the machines Well, when we see the practical, you will understand this. I'll tell you quickly what did you achieve here. You achieved the downtime. What happened? See what happens if I if I have to move 10 machines, okay, I will move 10 machines and then I'll start creating load balancer. Then I'll start creating low, uh, uh, rules and then uh, I'll test them. At least it will take six to seven hours. Instead of that, I can create my load balancer. I can have test machines in on Azure. I'll check everything is working fine. Later on, I'll move my actual machines and just replace the backend machines in load balancer. I hope you are uh, relating this to the load balancer topic. Then only you will understand right? backend machines, front IP, front end IP, 
you will have to see that once if you are not re able to re relate it to see that uh, session once and then you will realize it okay once all these tasks are done this is called landing zone okay landing zone itself is a huge topic a big topic it's it's i have explained it in very uh uh just like a feature that is not the case landing zone apne aap mein uska ek assessment hota hai uske liye microsoft se help liya jata hai landing zone because that is a base of your migration right so it is not that easy you can say that we used to get a diagram for landing zone setup in landing zone setup also our part was just the implementation kitne resource group hone chahiye kitne vnet hone chahiye vnet mein segregation kya hai subnets kitne hone chahiye vpn chahiye nahi chahiye firewall is there or not you are not going to decide that because you don't know the existing infrastructure you used to get tickets you used to get documents you used to get forms us pe aapko sare details hoti thi create 10 resource groups okay we are planning to start migration project from next month before that we have to set up landing zone create 100 resource groups 200 vnets 500 vpn energies four uh, vpns three firewall etc create some policies something like this okay and this everything the club of policies can be called as your blueprint in case they ask you so read this answer thoroughly you will understand it otherwise we'll practice it uh, in interview sessions also okay all these all the tasks which can be performed without vm we set up them first in short i mean in short anything and everything which can be done before getting our vms from our on premises to uh, our cloud we should get them done first example vnet it can be done with machine without machine also nsg it can be done with machine without machine also so it's better thing that we do all these things first what will happen you are saving time here see what it says then then think of moving machine it decreases the downtime window use this word use this jargon it will give the impression that you have really worked okay it decreases the downtime once migrated then we perform testing test karte hain hum log usko quickly and then connectivity and testing and then we do the dns changing now what do you mean by dns changing or repointing example i am using some application people software workday now workday is uh, redirecting me to a server which is hosted on my on premises uska ip aa raha hoga but now i have changed the server to dns records mein jaake bas change karna hai okay while practicing now the smallest landing zone is must a practice ke waqt bhi when we do our uh, migration it will ask for these details though i have not created these details okay i have not created these details so i want you to see the error that how it looks and then we will create this details and then we'll do the migration so let me go back there i hope our uh, machine is uh, the project is ready okay here so this is ready it is coming from hyper v now what are the requirements requirement is you will have to install hyper v replication provider which is azure site recovery provider you'll have to download it from here it is being downloaded and you have to download one registration key so that exe file should know that where this uh, migration is going what or what all information this registration key has i'll let you know okay so we download it from here being an azure implementation engineer this is your job to log into your portal and download these two files download these two files and then copy it copy it to a network uh, network location or somewhere wherever you want wherever, wherever your system admin team is asking okay so you have copied that and you have pasted that now the next step you have to install that where will you install this this has to be installed on hyper v host because we have selected hyper v hence we are talking about hyper v if it was v spare then v spare host and if it was physical machines kisi bhi ek server pe aap isko install kar do which is connected which is in the same network connected to all other servers guys are you getting it am i going too fast just because i said i want to go fast and get it in one session that does not mean that we are just doing it for the sake of it if you are not getting it stop it it's okay we can do it in two sessions also right but the ultimate aim is understanding that should not be on the sake yeah samitra srishti amit are you guys getting it till now yes yeah right fine so we have done this we have copied this file we have we have copied this file to a uh, location where i have my hyper v okay once that is done once that is done we'll we'll have to install that okay here it is these are the file i will install this now before installing the file okay let, let me install it first 
I'll show you the machines also which we are trying to migrate. I've clicked on installation. It is always recommended to check Microsoft updates. So you can say in your interview also that we always used to do the updates, but if we are not doing it now, it takes time. We don't have much time and this is just a lab session. So we are not checking updates. It's fine. Installation location can be the default one. It is installing it while it is being installed. Let me show you which two servers we are migrating. So I'm planning to migrate this server win 2k16 and the Linux server. Okay, these two servers I'm planning to uh, move. So where I have this Hyper-V manager machine, this is on my laptop. So I will install this uh, software, which I copied from portal on my laptop. If it is on some server, I'll copy it on, on a server. Okay, now what do I have in this machine? Just to check when I transfer it, when I migrate it, I, I should have some confirmation, right? So if I check, this is what my application has. This server I'm talking about, okay, guys. This server, Win 2K16. I'm planning to move this Win 2K16, this machine, to cloud. Before moving, I want to show it to you that which application do I have here. So I have Workday application here. Okay. So once it is moved, I want you guys to check. As of now, you cannot access it because it is my internal application. If you say it is an internal IP class B. Okay. So um, I'm going too fast till here because we have already done this uh, in yesterday's session. This is there in the recording. Okay, so uh, you cannot access this, but I want to take this application publicly. So now once I move this to uh, Azure, I will give you the public IP and then you can try if you are able to access the same application. Okay, that is our method to uh, check the validation method, whether the application has been moved successfully or not. So here it has been done. Okay, I have installed this. I hope you are not getting confused. This is the download link for .exe file, which I have installed here. Okay, now I have to register it. Now, what do I mean by register? When I click on register, it is asking for subscription name. It is asking for vault name. It is asking for Hyper-V site name. By the way, this installation, guys, you will not do it. Okay, being a cloud engineer, you won't have access on Hyper-V. You won't have access on vCenter. There will be some vCenter admin. There will be some Windows admin, system admin. It's their job to do it. They won't give you access. That is the reason you copy those files and paste it for them and they will do it. But while doing also now they are not as your admin. So they don't know what is the subscription. They don't know what is the vault name. They Maybe they don't even understand what is a vault. Hence, you will be there. They will ask you to join the call. They will do it in front of you. It's always a collaboration work, right? But somewhere you have access, somewhere they have access. Okay. So here, instead of giving this information manually, now you will give them this file, the one which we downloaded already. So they will browse it. This is the file. Okay. The name Workday is coming because the R, uh, as your migrate project's name was Workday Application Migration. This is the project name. That is the reason this file has this name. See, the moment you upload this file, it has everything. I hope this works uh, uh, today. Yesterday, we were stuck here. Okay, connect uh, proxy server. If they want to use any proxy server, again, when it comes to proxy server, it's completely uh, the system admin team's job. You don't have to worry about it. They will type the server address, whatever they have. If they have, they don't have the, uh, I, I, the whatever the port they have, uh, maybe 443, the username and ID, you won't have this information. This is purely system admins work. And most of the time they, they, they do use uh, a proxy server. So when you speak in your interview, you can mention about the proxy server also. But here in training, we are skipping the proxy server because we I did not want to set up that. It is a time consuming process or change. That's the only thing is now it is directly going to internet. If I have a proxy server, traffic will move from here to that proxy server and then to internet. Yes, guys. So while this is being configured, do you have any questions? Nothing so far. Okay. So if the, if there are any errors or something gets stuck, like uh, it was happening yesterday, mm -hmm. so we have to work together to, together to troubleshoot it. Or we can ask them to troubleshoot. That depends. If you clearly see, like yesterday's error, what was the error? That this server is already registered. Please deregister it from Azure portal. It was very clear error, right? So the error says, please deregister it from the Azure portal. So what do you think who, who will work you or the system admin team? 
right we, we exactly know. so that depends on the server depends on the error now if the error says that port 443 at the firewall is not opened where where am i talking about port 443 firewall data center so do you think you will have access to open that port no then you will have to ask system admin team. They will get in touch with their security team. They will get whatever approvals. They might ask you that share the details. By the way, very good question, right? One of the interviews question, they will definitely ask you when it comes to migration. They'll say, okay, you have done these many migrations. You have migrated these many servers. Very good. So were all of them a smooth transactions or did you face any issue? And you cannot say all of them were smooth transactions because you're bound to get errors. The moment you say, no, there were some errors. What kind of errors? What did you do? The similar questions will come. But by the way, we have, uh, I, I have already addressed them here. So you can uh, just refer uh, this file. While that is happening, let me show it to you. So what happens while discovering, I can say I have 1000 servers, but I see only 800 are discovering. So these are the services you will have to check. Microsoft Azure Recovery Service Agent, management service this service this kind of uh, issues you can say that i i've been facing and this is how this is how we used to deal with them we used to check these services if services are running they are stop i'll restart them i'll reboot the server i'll check if everything is up to date i'll check if the network connectivity is there if the servers are pinging is there as a basic issues right? well we'll discuss them by the way We'll discuss them, but yes, a very, very important point. They will definitely ask you, Ki aapne itne saal kaam kiya, itne saal migration kiya, to, aise to nahi hoga that you have uh, not faced any issue. That That is uh, not a digestible answer, I would say. Okay, so it has been done. I'll click on finish. Just because I click here, finish, it doesn't mean I'm done with this, okay? It still says the register Hyper-V host. How many it shows? Zero. So I'll have to wait for this, okay? So let's wait and refresh it. I'll refresh and check if I can see the connected host. I hope you guys are getting it, right? Yes. So uh, right now we're doing a agent, using an agent, we are trying to do a migration. There's also an agentless migration. Right. This is agentless. We are not installing any agent. When when you, when you say agent, in every server you will install some agent. In every server you will install some agent. I mean you don't do that manually, but that the agent based is something different. This is agentless. See here, so, I'll tell, oh. I am moving these two servers. Okay. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Amit. I'll, I'll just uh, I'll give you uh, some chance to speak. Let me uh, explain this. These two servers I'm, I am planning to move, right? Did I log into this server and install anything? This Win2K16 or did I even log into Linux? No, no. But what is your understanding? That... Uh, what is your understanding? Where am I downloading these two? On Win2K16 or on the machine where this Hyper-V is installed? <laughs> So the file which we download, which uh, mm -hmm. the OV file, OVA file, you say that. Right? So, ye bhi agent ho gaya, na? Yeah. Hey, but where, that that is what my question is. Instead of these two, now let's say I have two hundred servers. My question is this file, the one which I register from here, right? This mm -hmm. one. Where did I download it, or where did I install it? Did I install it in these servers, one of these servers, or let's say if these are 200 servers. Did I install it here or did I install it on the host where my Hyper-V is installed? The host. Host, right. That is the reason it is agentless. When I say agent, a small agent, though it could be made, made very small uh, application, but that will install on all these 200 servers. Then it will be called agent base to fetch some data, to fetch some data from these servers. Still any confusion, Amit? No, no, but so each machine, if we try, we install something on each each and exactly. every machine. That exactly, yes, agent. agent based. But you don't do that literally. That is just for your understanding. I'm explaining, elaborating like this. You don't literally log into thousand machines and do that. You'll do something when it comes to Hyper-V or something. 
uh, especially it happens in physical and Hyper-V, you will install one appliance here, but that appliance will install some agent on those machines. Okay. You, you don't have to do that manually. For you, it's almost similar. Few changes will be there, but it's almost similar. Okay, so I'm waiting to see if... Uh, Okay, while this is being done, any, any other questions do you have, guys? Yeah, so uh, in interview, we, we won't say that we will be a part of landing zone team, right? Why not? You can say this. Okay. So Implementation, you are always there. You say implementation, I was always there. So landing zone, when blueprint use blueprint, then we use script, right? It's to up to create... you. Yeah, they, they will definitely ask you. Every thing is going to The moment you say, I used to deploy machines, how? Portal? or uh, this one, partial or uh, Terraform, what you used to use. Wo, ye question throughout her jake same hoga. Now it's up to you. Thoda hum log interview sessions mein agar Terraform wagera seekhte hai, you say Terraform, ARM templates humne already kiya, you say ARM templates, or you can stick to this. It, it, I have worked with small projects where we did not move more than 50 or 40 machines at a time or maximum I have worked at 30 machines. I have given the example also. The big, biggest project I have worked on was uh, 30 virtual machines here somewhere it is I'll, I'll show it to you it, it, it is there in this one note okay so you can say it because it was a small uh, infrastructure I have been working on small infrastructure we never used IAC infrastructure as a code so we never used that we did all the uh, deployment manually so when it comes to landing zone setup also blueprint also it can be done using a code using Terraform using PowerShell or manually so it's up to you how you say it or if you want to say you can say yes i have done it using terraform or i have done it using powershell but i have never written a script i am not good with scripts Ar we used to get this script from architecture team our job was to run and then cross check once this uh, this has been let's say that i give you one document okay i give you one document and i give you one script i give you some subscription some details this is what you have to create and your job is to run that script and later on cross check cross verify proofreading if it has been done this much you can say clear okay A even for landing zone for everything it applies you can create accesses you can give accesses you can create resource group vnet using powershell also using terraform also and using portal also so it's up to you and even if you say i used to do it say it clearly okay i used to do it but i do not know scripting scripts we used to get them you say, okay, I can read scripts. I can uh, edit scripts, but I cannot create them from scratch. And editing, it's not a big task. If I give you a script now, in fact, we have done that practical already. If you guys remember, I gave you one script, PowerShell script, I gave you a machine deploy. And then I asked you to change it according to your name, your uh, resource group name. Do you guys remember that? If not, you can watch the session once. Yeah. So why you the script edit can also that question you you'll have to change the uh, VNet's name you'll have to change the resource group name you'll have to change the location which you are planning maybe the script has East US and the new one you want in West US so basic things so you can sell that and trust me on this like half an hour interview no one is going to ask you okay script like no one may, no one is going to ask you that okay fine so here we have downloaded this we installed this on our Hyper-V we attach the we did the registration using the registration key finalize finalize the registration prepare for the replication so now we are preparing it now we see one host is connected okay by the way this can be done on multiple hosts also the same file i can download if i have 300 servers which are divided on 30 hyper v's i can download and install the same thing on all of them and i'll see them here how many are connected now I'll do the finalize the registration. I clicked on this. Okay, now finalizing registration and completing the virtual machine discovery takes 10 to 15 minutes. You can start replicating after 15 minutes. So now, now we have started the process. It's uh, about Sarah sub coach time take time consuming process. Hai. Uh, though it won't take 10 to 15 minutes, I guess. Thoda usse jaldi ho okay, so while this is uh, being registered, 
if you guys have any questions let me know by the way we are we have not started the replication of machines understand one thing ab hum kya kar rahe we are just discovering ke mere us hyper v mein kitne machines hai maybe i have 2000 machines i don't want to replicate all of them i am planning to out of those 2000 i am planning to move only 100 machines so i want to replicate only 100 machines so this discovery will give you a list of all servers then you will select your required servers and then the replication will start once your servers are replicated properly then we'll do a test migration once the test migration is working fine then we'll do the actual migration difference between test uh, test migration and actual migration in test migration your actual machines won't shut down okay your act actual machine will keep on running as it is you can have a copy here you can test and do everything once it is working you'll go for the actual migration actual migration that is the cutover time someone has asked me what is the cutover i am not sure if is what was one of you uh, amit was it was that your question because it it mm -hmm. was there somewhere in the interview or something what is cutover so cutover ka matlab hota hai literally that from your physical data center wahan se us application ko cut karna and then start it here that is what the cutover is so you do the cutover you change the dns and everything and then your application is up इस सब के बीच में आपके साथ एप्लीकेशन टीम होगा सिस्टम टीम होगा हर कोई होगा एप्लीकेशन टीम विल बी देयर टू चेक इफ एवरीथिंग इज वर्किंग फाइन बिफोर यू सेंड एन ईमेल टू ऑल ऑफ द ऐप ओनर्स एंड एवरीवन ऐप ओनर इज अ डिफरेंट थिंग ओके ऐप ओनर कुड बी अ वीपी अ मैनेजर और समवन व्हेन आई से एप्लीकेशन टीम उनका कोई टेस्टर या मिड लेवल का कोई एम्प्लॉई वगैरह होगा आपके साथ ही विल बी वर्किंग विद यू गाइस ओके टू टेस्ट द एप्लीकेशन इफ एप्लीकेशन इज वर्किंग फाइन is there any port which you needed to open and you forgot to open while migrating so they will check and once you get a go ahead from them it could be a service uh, service request attached with many tasks it could be an incident attached with many tasks it could be an excel file jahan pe ek bada sa service request hoga usme sabke task hoge and every team will perform their task like dns up uploading that is not your job you won't have access to dns server you will require someone from system admin team you will tell them that everything has been done please repoint the dns they will do it they will mark their task as done once everything is done their testing team will check once the testing is done then you can send an email you as in not literally you won't do that okay but when i say you it's your team maybe your manager does that your team team leader does that or if architecture team someone from the architect team is working closely with you on this project they will do it they will also have a look at that so but you should know the process why am i explaining this because when you are working even if you don't do that you should know the process okay so the registration has been finalized okay this this has been done now let's go and check i'm hoping this to start so i can start the replication before uh, this session ends and then we'll take a break of 5 to 10 minutes meanwhile all machines will be synchronized and then we'll start the migration okay here it is it has discovered two servers why two servers yes guys why two linux, servers linux and windows one because yes because there, there are only two servers if i had 3 4 10 servers it would have discovered these many servers okay discover two servers mm. we can start the replication by clicking here first let me show you the overview what all do we see here under overview we see replicating machines do we have any machines which are being replicated now no so you won't see anything hence the migrate button doesn't make any sense as of now infrastructure server this is the server or servers it could be in our case it is only one server this is the server where my this uh, the tool which we installed that is there it's a hyper v server did you get it guys or are, are you confused which server is infrastructure server what do you mean by infrastructure server this is the actual server ye wala server jis pe mera hyper v hai aur ye wahi wala server hai jis pe hum logo ne we installed our this azure recovery wala file as your site recovery provider the one which we installed or jahan pe humne ye key attached kiye the that is the server this is my infrastructure server okay the name of the server is on prem machine on this server i have two virtual machines which i am planning to migrate 
okay what is the type hyper v software version this is the software version so okay you can say this one also that if there are any issues you used to come here and check if the software is latest or no if there are any issues if the connection is working fine if you want to add server you can add it from here and if you want to remove server like yesterday's error we, we can delete it from here clear guys yeah i was okay. about to ask like how should we delete the server here you, you can delete it from here okay one thing that with with this migration project multiple servers can be added okay i can add two three four five six seven numbers there are not n numbers there is a number but i don't know the limitation you can search it or no one ask that so it's okay you can add multiple servers here but one server you cannot add it with two projects that was the error yesterday if you guys remember sanmitra if you remember kal jab hum add kar rahe the do you remember the error so what yes, happened yes. the same machine i had uh, added in some other project also some other mig migration project and same machine i am adding here also that is not possible but adding multiple servers to this project that is fine why is it fine why is it possible why it has to be there because i told you on one server you can't have 300 machines technically you can but it's not sensible maximum you could have 50 40 machines okay in in, in this server even if i have uh, extremely heavy ram and cpu and everything i will have maximum 40 servers on this 40 virtual machines so let's say my total target is 120 40 40 80 and similarly so 5 or 6 or 7 whatever the number those many hyper v servers are required so i can add multiple okay current jobs what are the current jobs are anything fetching no see whatever we had to do it has been done successfully but is there anything in progress replication or anything no events it's as good as logs properties we know right so it, it's that's all here now let's start replicating we could have done it from there also we can do it from here also start replication by the way zero failed zero in progress as of now no issues i will start the replication you can start replication from here now i told you that how many machines do i have you can select by the what do you want to migrate what are we migrating here are we migrating some web apps am i planning to get it web apps no am i planning to uh, migrate some java apps no what am I planning to migrate? A virtual machine. So I'll select virtual machine. Where are we migrating? Azure VM. So I click on continue. I told you that I could have 200 machines and out of them I want to replicate only two. So that I will get here. Okay, same, same options I'm selecting again. Okay, this is the guys. Uh, import the migration settings for assessment. You remember the assessment tab I showed you? There were recommendations there. If if we had any assessment report and if it had any uh, assessment uh, recommendation, we, we could have seen that here and we could have selected that settings from there. But as of now, I do not have. So I'll specify the migration settings manually. OK, so you'll see a list of all servers here. In case you plan to move only 50, you will select only those 50. As of now, I want to move both of them. Click next. If you see, see, we will require a virtual network okay so i'm cre i will create a virtual network or i can take any virtual network which is already here subnet it's default no and i will start the replication okay resource group has to be there uh, and it's done guys replication will start i'll have to just select the okay here we have to select the ram and everything that what kind of machine i have to select if we were using that uh, recommendation it will select automatically os type and then i will click on next and it will start the replication i'll ping you guys when the repli once the replication has been done and then we'll start the sessions is it okay yeah fine 